Welcome to Growth Against the Grain, a podcast that invites wives and mamas to seek Jesus in the everyday, from laundry to carpool to date nights with your hubby and all those big and little conversations that you have throughout the day. I'm your host, Michelle Castro, and today we're talking about what does it actually mean to seek Jesus in every conversation? Have you been wondering that? Because if you look at Well, if you've been listening, I keep saying that. Seek Jesus in every conversation. And you're like, okay, so do I sit around and just talk about Jesus all day, every day? And while sure, that would be great, um, it's not practical. Like you're not actually doing that. So what does that mean? And so... That's what we're going to chat about because we have these opportunities. Sometimes it's the overt conversation, the obvious one where we get to have a like a straight up theological, doctrinal, spiritual conversation about Jesus. And sometimes it's just not. It's not. We don't even bring Jesus up. But but how do we ha- seek him in all of those conversations and all the the day today. So it was kind of funny to me as I was thinking through this. We've been camping out on 1 Corinthians 1031 with without really even meaning to at all. And I'll be honest, this verse popped out at me. A friend really opened my eyes to it. I'm sure it's something that I've read a thousand times and something that has been shared with me over the years. But you know how it is sometimes like you're in a situation and um, they bring up a verse and you're like, oh my goodness. Like it brings new meaning because of your life situation, your circumstances, whatever for right then. And you're like, wow, this is amazing. How have I not seen this before? So 1 Corinthians 10 31, let me read it. It says, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do all to the glory of God. So it's pretty all encompassing, right? So whether you eat or drink, I love to eat or drink, whether you're doing one of those things or or Paul's like, yeah, so let me just be be clear because there's a Karen over in the corner that's like, I'm not eating or drinking. And <laughs> we all know those that are like detailed and like, well, t- you didn't say sitting on the floor playing with Legos or you didn't say doing the laundry. Paul's like, um, yeah, or whatever you do. So if you're not eating or drinking, it's like everything else. But I think we can say eating or drinking, meaning like everything, the mundane, the normal things of life, right? So what does it mean to seek Jesus in every conversation? And I really feel like that verse encompasses it all. So whether you're eating or drinking or whatever you're doing, do it all to the glory of God, period. Now, that seems like simple, right? We walk away and we're like, oh, yeah, 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 do it all to the glory of God. Got it. Sure. No problem. So what does that mean, though? Well, In my mind, it goes back to our attitudes and the way that we respond to things and just the overall way we are kind and respectful to people. So if you're in the United States, you know that it's an election year. And as it's funny, I have some notes here and I didn't put any of this down, but I always pray beforehand and I say, "Okay, Lord, like whatever you want me to say, you you come out of my mouth. So. We'll go back to some of these notes, but um, I keep thinking of, obviously there's, I'll get back to the political in just one second. Um, There's obviously those, like I've said, those conversations where I found myself in those spiritual conversations. I'm at work. I work a couple days a week at a free people nearby, which is so much fun. Um, But I'll be talking, the store's empty and we're, you know, just doing stuff around the store and, and I get an opportunity to have an actual spiritual, theological, doctrinal conversation with somebody there who's either a fellow believer or not. And it's awesome. But how many times have you had that opportunity to insert the Lord and his goodness in a in a conversation, but you hold back because you're like, oh, that's kind of weird. Case in point, I will I will tell on myself as much as I can. Um, and it, because I, I feel like I These situations are not in a vacuum. Like I'm not the only one who's experienced some of these situations. So December of 2022, we had a fire in our house and we were moving. We moved into a hotel and then we were going to move into a rental house. And I was um, communicating with the owner of the house. It's an Airbnb. And I was communicating with her. She had sent me a text just like, hey, welcome. You know, you'll be moving in, blah, blah, blah. Kind of like the standard stuff. But I could tell that it was from an actual person and not 
not just like a computer generated something because she had said some nice things in there. And I remember catching myself for a second saying, okay, I could respond and say, oh, thank you so much. Or I could respond by saying, thank you so much. The Lord has been so good to us. And I chose the latter, but there was a moment where I paused and I was like, oh, do I don't know. We all have those people in our lives that spiritualize everything. And because of that, sometimes I hesitate. And I think, no, like the Lord is good in all situations. Whatever that other person decides to spiritualize, like maybe I should be recognizing Jesus in more things. So I remember sending that text off and her response immediately was like, oh, that's awesome. We've been praying for your family. This is a woman who at the time I did not know at all. No, like there was, she didn't even know who I was. Like we were just names on a paper. And I thought, gosh, like she still would have been praying for our family. And so we had this opportunity to have this great conversation, find out that they had attended our church. They since moved a, a ways away and, but they had attended our church. We end up having like this a ton of mutual friends. You know how that happens when you go to a church and all of a sudden you've got friends of friends of friends of friends. And so it was just so amazing. And and that that instance has stuck with me where there was an opportunity for me to seek Jesus in every conversation and point to Jesus in that conversation and give him the honor and glory. Because really our family's safety was all because the Lord God protected us. So sometimes it's those conversations. And sometimes we find ourselves in some of those conversations that are a little polarizing. Like I said, we're in an election year. And while all of those topics are polarizing all of the time, all of a sudden when we find ourselves in this election year, all of the polarizing topics come to fruition. And I have strong opinions. I have very strong opinions on a lot of things and especially those polarizing topics. And I have not always handled myself in the best way. And I probably won't always because my flesh is weak and my flesh likes to take over. But here's an opportunity for us to seek Jesus in these conversations. When those opportunities come up, I just was in a conversation with somebody recently and they were like, well, both of our candidates are, they're really terrible. So we're going to go with the middle chat, you know, the, the independent. And I I had to bite my tongue because I didn't want it to get into a situation where really it was me spewing what I feel to be right. They have to take that before the Lord and they have to pray about those things. And I have opinions on that. I really do. But what I have found is sometimes my opinions are not bringing glory and honor to the Lord. Now, let me be clear, the way in which I vocalize my opinions, my stance on those polarizing issues may be, and I I firmly believe that they are biblically based, but it doesn't mean that just because they are rooted in God's word, that I cannot come off in a rude, dishonoring, disglorifying way to the Lord. Y'all know what I mean, right? There's those people out there that you are like, We are right on, like we see eye to eye, but the way in which you express your views and opinions are just rude. They're not okay. So it's kind of like you can be right, but you can also be wrong. So yes, you can be dead right on that issue because you know that God, um, he loves the sanctity of life. Like we could take that issue, for example, but the way in which you handle it could be a way in which um, the Lord is not honored and glorified. And that's where we come into seeking Jesus in every conversation. Are you praying about these things? You know, are you truly asking the Lord, which kind of brings me to how I was going to wrap all of this up, but how do we seek Jesus in every conversation? And it really is, are we going back to Ephesians 6? The Christian life is simple. Something that I hear over and over and over again, again, in one of these polarizing issues is that um, confusion. I hear a lot of confusion. And the reality is that God is not a God of confusion. God is very clear and he is very 
simple. If you take, let's just take, for example, creation versus evolution. Creation is a very simple, linear plan, right? It's very clear. God created the heavens and the earth in six days. On the seventh day, he rested. It's not easy. It's not easy. I mean, I can't even take out some Play-Doh and create something that looks resembling anything. I mean, it might look like an amoeba, but really not at all. Like I can't even do that. So when I say simple, it is not to be confused with easy. When you look at the plan of evolution, like it is confusing. It is convoluted. That is not how God works. He is very simple. Point one, two, three. There's there's no, um, like have you seen those flow charts that's like, well, if yes, then go this way. If no, then go this way. If maybe, then go this way. And then there's like branches off of everything. God is very, very clear. Not simple. I'm sorry, not easy, but very clear. So the Christian life is very easy. So how do we go and prepare ourselves for these conversations that we're going to have every day, whether they are sit down, face to face, verbal conversations, whether maybe you're talking spiritual or you're just shooting the breeze? Like, how do we have an attitude that responds in kindness and love and You can go back and look at an episode that I did on what love is because it's not just all flowery. In fact, my um, it makes me think of my devotion that I was reading this morning, where we think about good and and how the Lord. You know, we can look at um, Jeremiah twenty nine eleven. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, to give you a future and a hope. Well, that all sounds really great, like paths of gold, and it's going to be amazing. And it's not because the Lord puts us through fires to refine us, to draw us closer to him. Similarly with love, like it's not all just flowery, like love actually is meant to pull out things that are not true, like that are not, um, that go against the Lord. If we truly love one another, then in love, in kindness, we are going to call things out and we are going to sell, tell people like, no, this is not actually not what God's word says. I'm trying to find that exact um, episode. So I will hopefully remember to link it in the show notes. Y'all know I am kind of terrible about remembering afterwards to link something. I need to keep like a piece of paper with me. And I'm sorry, I'm distracted because I'm trying to find that one. It was not too long ago. Um, It was in like, uh, oh, there we go. Episode 283. I knew I would find it. So go back and look at episode 283 for more details on what love really is. Because we live in this culture that wants to tell us that love is love. And that's not what the Bible says. So anyways, but when we find ourselves in those conversations, have we renewed our mind? Have we started with a time with the Lord? Are we constantly praying and asking the Lord, especially if you know like you're going to meet with somebody who has differing opinions as you? Are you praying on the way there? Like, Lord, help me to love this person. Help me to be bold. Help me to speak boldly because loving a person also does not mean that we let them walk all over us and they get to spew their beliefs and we just have to sit back and take it. And I feel like there are too many Christians that do that and too often I've been guilty of that. But it also means that we respond in kindness and in love and we can boldly proclaim, hey, this is what I believe. You believe this and this is what I believe. And if they want you to respect their opinion, then I believe that they need to respect your opinion. But how do we seek Jesus in these conversations? Well, we have to start by seeking him. We have to start by spending time with him. We have to start by renewing our mind. We have to start by putting on our armor every single day day, every single day. And sometimes it's multiple times in the day we're like, oh Lord, please renew my mind. Renew my mind. This is what you've asked me to do. You've called me to whether I'm eating or drinking or whatever I'm doing to bring you honor and glory. And maybe that means he's shutting your mouth. Maybe that means he's opening your mouth and saying, hey sister, I I want you to say these things. And yeah, maybe that person isn't going to agree with you, but that doesn't matter. What matters is is what I think of you and if you're honoring me. And I know, again, it's hard. It's hard. Um, I don't always do it in the best possible way. But I'm trying. 
I'm trying. So friend, these are just some of my thoughts and what my intention is when I say seek Jesus in every conversation. And I just pray that you get an opportunity to seek Jesus in a conversation today, today, whether it's an actual spiritual conversation. And if you're not praying for true like opportunities to share the gospel with people, you might be missing opportunities because I know I have missed so many because I wasn't specifically praying that the Lord would show me those opportunities, show me those times to be be um, clear about what his word says. And, you know, sometimes maybe where I like hold back and I'm like, oh, I don't know. Um Ask the Lord to show you those opportunities to be bold and to share his tr- His word, his absolute truth with people because you never know. You might be missing them like I was and you might be, uh, you might be blind. Um, so friend, I am so grateful for you. And if you would do me a huge favor huge favor. Every time I'm going to ask you this, and it's not going to cost you a single dime at all. If uh, whether you're, whether this is the first episode you're listening to, or you've listened to, you know, I don't know, since the beginning or, you know, whatever. You're new. You're three episodes in. Whatever. I have three ways that you can help this podcast. One is pray. Pray for me. Pray that the Lord is honored and glorified in all that is said and done here. Pray that it is his name that is extolled above all all else. Number two, share the podcast on your socials, please. And that goes hand in hand with number three, which is leave a review. This helps in a huge way. I have some big hopes and dreams and goals for this podcast, but just like Instagram or Facebook or TikTok or YouTube, podcasts have um, an algorithm that is beyond me to understand. I don't fully get it, but whatever, they do run on an algorithm. And one of the things with podcasts is reviews. And so for me to get some of these big names and guests on that I would love to have talking about seeking Jesus in every conversation from politics to toddlers to meal prepping to like whatever, you know, rhythms and routines and all the things, um, it really helps to have a a lot of five-star reviews. We have 101 five-star reviews right now. So if you haven't left a review, would you go do that right now? The best, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, that's kind of where like all of, it's kind of like the standard for podcasts. If you'll go to Growth Against the Grain on Apple Podcasts and scroll to the bottom, it'll say review, leave a review. And you can leave a review there. If you've already left a review and you want to amend it, awesome. It'll pop up and you can amend that review. If you listen on other platforms, please leave a review over there. That would mean so much to me. And if you want to show me what that is, because I cannot figure out how to find it on Spotify or any of the other things, take a screenshot of it and send it over to me. That would mean so much because if you go look in the show notes, you can see where you can find me. It's over on Instagram. I have actually consolidated everything to one Instagram account. It's me, Michelle Castro, because it's what you get. It's me. You get all the DIY, you get my faith, my family, and you get the podcast and then whatever else like nonsense I got going on there. So it's all over there. Thanks for being here. I'll see you next week. And until then, seek Jesus in every conversation.